Thanks to the supporters of channel member Kevin Wilcox. It's not really clear, Mrs. Weymouth. I can't work out if we're already in Europe or not. You know how unreliable the little icons can be on the league tables. We've fallen into that trap before. I think we might have qualified for the Conference League, but could still get into the Europa League. No, we've not had the inbox message. That's why it's so confusing. So I think, bottom line, we've just got to win both of these matches today. And if we do, we should end up in Europe. Hello and welcome to part 124 of Homegrown. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our final two games of the Premier League season for you. We're at home against both Chelsea and West Ham. Since you were last with me, this is what's been going on. Um, a little bit of up and down. We beat Slam Dunks Birmingham away from home, but lost to Manchester City. Thumped Arsenal and then lost away against Everton. We also have a little bit of a Villa Lobos problem. Not the one we've had before. The one we've had before seems to be solving itself. He is scoring goals. However, twice in the last three months or so, he's missed matches because he's been out at nightclubs in the early hours of the morning. Um, it doesn't. It shows he's not selected on there, but I think it was one of those two and the Manchester City match he wasn't available for because he was out boozing. We might have a bit of an attitude problem rascal here, so we're going to have to keep an eye on things. Um, he does also have an impact on player development as well, I think. So um, you can see his progress has taken a massive duck down because he's been out boozing. Um, it does seem to have made its way back up a little bit, but he's not actually in decline as a player because he's too busy faffing about at nightclubs having a lovely old time the positive that kind of balances out against that um, is that James Francisco has emerged as a striker and really the strike partner to Villa Lobos or could become the strike partner to to Bayer if Villa Lobos continues to be a moron um, but he's been in excellent form in his last few games um, you can see he's very much enjoyed playing in a couple of friendlies against some of the local sides, scoring 10 goals during an international break, um, and then came straight back into the team and has four goals in his last two games. So Francisco seems to be filling the void that Villa Lobos might be leaving, although Villa Lobos is scoring goals as well. They're both doing really rather well, performance-wise, at least. And this is the league table. As you can see, we have the icon, qualified for Europa Conference League, but we haven't had the email. So I don't know for sure that seventh place does get us the Conference League. We could probably check out who won the Carabao Cup. Uh, Manchester City won the Carabao Cup and they're going to get in the Champions League. So seventh place should be Conference League. I think we are in the Conference League, but I think sixth place would get us Europa League. We're five points behind Bournemouth, but we do have a game in hand, which is this game against Chelsea. Does it tell us? Here we go. Here we go. So... Top four get Champions League. Then fifth and sixth for Europa League. Seventh is Conference League. So if we can catch Bournemouth, we'll get into the Europa League. I've still never played in the Europa Conference League. So it would be quite nice to play in it, just so I can say I've played in it. Um, but if we beat Chelsea, we're then two points behind Bournemouth, probably with a better goal difference going into the final day. And on the final day, we're at home against West Ham, who are just below us in 10th place. Meanwhile, Bournemouth away against Aston Villa, who will potentially need a result to stay in the Premier League. So Villa are going to be properly up for it. There is a chance we could catch Bournemouth if we win both of our games. It is a big if, obviously, because Chelsea aren't going to roll over and just let us thump them. And we have been using the 4-2-4 during this run of games. It is a very amended version of it. You can see it's based on my uh, streamer showdown winning tactic from the most recent streamer showdown. I know anyone who watched the stream of Showdown over on Twitch will know at no point did I use a 424. So it's not completely taken from the stream of Showdown, but it does seem to be working better than the Sheffield United variant we were using yesterday. Uh, Park has been injured, but is now back in the team. He's also scoring for fun. Um, we are a good side. We just need to win a couple more games and see if we can sneak into the Europa League and the extra riches that are there because we need it. Not because we particularly want to play in Europe, but because our players do. Gregoire, for example, um, we've had to agree that if we get a bid of 83 million or more for him, we'll sell him because he wants to move to a bigger club. And I don't think he's going to be the only one we have that conversation with if we continue to not be in Europe. His reasons for wanting to leave, he wants to play in the Champions League. 
We obviously can't get there this season, but a year in the Europa League while we continue to make progress forward is all steps in the right direction to maybe push for the Champions League in the next year or two. And even if it ultimately means we can't keep Gregoire at the club, if we can keep Park at the club long term, because we might be at Fazikas and a few of these others who will be the next asking to leave, then it's, that's why we need to be pushing to do it. And of course, once we're in the Champions League, we can then bring the likes of Abagai and Gregoire back to the club, although Gregoire hasn't been here long enough to be homegrown at club yet. So actually, it won't be an option with him. He still needs to play another full season with us. If he goes this summer for 83 million, he's gone for good. Whereas Abagai, of course, we could potentially bring back um, any time, really. We've got the money to do it right now if we wanted to. Um, I imagine at the moment he wouldn't come back. Abbo, uh, I don't know how to spell his name. I don't know how to say his name. Um, he's valued at 49 million at Inter. He's played twice for England this season. So he's now an England international. Now he's playing for Inter. He's only played, he's only started 15 games for Inter. So we should probably be keeping an eye on him because if we can bring him back at some point on the cheap, see, again, he'd require home to improve their standing in the English Premier League what we're working towards. So, the team for the game against Chelsea, we've got Williams in goal, a back four of Thomas, Anderson, Fazikas and Gillespie, Gregoire and Oliveira in midfield, Richards and Park out wide, Francisco and Villalobos up front. And there are injuries aplenty in the squad at the moment. You can see we've got injuries to Perisato, Hodgkinson, Perez, Richardson, Lillis, Caetano. I mean, Lillis and Caetano aren't exactly regular starters, but Perisato... Perez, Richardson would all be in with a shout of being in this team today. Uh, Perez would probably be in because Park's not fully fit. And obviously, Ola Richards, he's played a lot of football this year because Richardson's had quite an injury-ravaged season. But ordinarily, Ola Richards wouldn't be a player who you'd be expecting to start for us these days. Uh, right, go out there. Impress me. This game is on the telly. It's must win if we want to get in the Europa League. That's the key thing. If we don't win this game... Europa League is no longer an option. We've already done enough to secure the Conference League. But if we want Europa League, we have to beat Chelsea here. And Chelsea have had a rough season. They're down in the bottom half of the league. This isn't like beating a Champions League challenging Chelsea side. This is the mid-table Chelsea that we all know and love from the 90s. At Park, on the right-hand side, he's won a penalty there, I think. It's going to be touch and go whether that was actually in the penalty area or not. Definitely a foul. The ref is going over to... Oh, he's not going over to the little telly. He's talking to the little man who lives in his ear to find out if that was inside the penalty area or not. It is a penalty. Park wins the penalty. And who's stepping up to take it? Somebody who's left-footed. Who on earth? Oh, Gregoire, of course. Gregoire, I mean, that's a casual penalty. I don't like that at all. He scored it. The man's too confident. He knows he's too good for this team. And, uh, yeah, let's try not to get too casual. He has rolled that in. So gently, it's perfectly placed, but as a manager, a terrifying penalty to witness. So we'll just wait for the league table to update. Now it has. So this would leave us two points behind Bournemouth, level on goal difference with them, meaning we'd have to go into the final day. We'd have to win our game while they drew, if they drew theirs. Yeah, because if we're winning and they're drawing, we go ahead of them on goal difference. So that would mean a draw away against Villa for them and a win for us on the last day would be enough to get a sixth place and the Europa League, I think. You always take Kev Maths with a pinch of salt, but I'm pretty sure that's the situation we're in currently. Gillespie hooking the ball clear, but only as far as an on-rushing Chelsea midfield player, uh, but then wins it, wins it back again, this time with authority. And Francisco charging forward, gives it to Villa-Lobos. Villa-Lobos is in and grabs his 12th goal of the season, does a cartwheel, and then a couple of Jägermeisters, because apparently that's what he does these days. The man loves a drink. The man loves being out at nightclubs until the early hours of the morning. But ever since he's been playing up front with Francisco in this 4-2-4 system, the other thing that he loves is scoring goals. That's now he's, he's beaten his record of last season. He got 11 last year, 12 this year. And it doesn't really tell the whole story because eight of those 12 have come in the last seven or eight games. He is scoring prolifically in this tail end of the season. And he's in again here. Villa Lobos testing the keeper. And he's actually given away a goal kick there when he could have let that just roll out for a corner. A little bit of youthful naivety there. We won't hold it against him. We will hold the drinking against him and the clubbing and all the nonsense. But we'll work on that. We've put him in a mentoring group with Kieran Hodgkinson. So 
I mean, I'm tempted to put Harrison Davies in there as well, but I figured Kieran Hodgkinson in a mentoring group with him should sort him out. That's how mentoring groups work, isn't it? So fingers crossed, Hodgkinson, the model professional, will fix him. Park now, charging forward. He's come infield, plays it into the path of Ola Richards, and Richards makes it three. We are good at football. Chelsea, not so much. Just before half time, it's home three. Chelsea, nil. And our, our front four, our front four, we got there in the end. Our front four are really, really good. Um, even with Richards in, I mean, Richards doesn't look out of place in this team. I know he's fallen out of favour a little bit ever since Richardson arrived, like four years ago. And Richards has been very much a rotation player since then. But he's shown in the matches that he's played this year that they weren't wrong to give him runner-up in the Next Gen Award all those years ago. He has got talent. He just was unfortunate enough to have a slightly younger, slightly more talented player with a similar name turn up at the club a year after he did. Otherwise, Richards would be nailed on starter week in, week out and an absolute club legend by now, five years in. There's still time for him. If Richards keeps getting injured, uh, Richardson, sorry, if Richardson keeps getting injured, Richards has signed a new contract and he was out of contract at the end of this season. I was toying with the idea of letting him go. There were a couple of clubs who came in for him for free transfer offers and we just offered him a contract really to make sure if he does leave, we get a fee for him because I don't think he's the sort of player who should be leaving the club for nothing. So we gave him a new contract back in January just to make sure he didn't go anywhere for free. But that does mean he's now under contract for another two or three years. He's got time to force his way into this team if Richardson keeps accumulating injuries. It's similar to Ali Basic. Both of them, who were players who were supposed to be superstars for us for the future, have really missed a lot of football this year with injuries. Park playing it across to Francisco and he grabs his 10 for the year to make it four. This front four, boys and girls. This front four. We should have switched to the 4-2-4 long ago. It's um, it's revolutionary. Who knew? <laughs> if only someone had been telling me in the comments for years to stop using an attacking midfielder because they don't work in FM21. I finally listened, even though we've got lots of attacking midfielders at the club. We just have to repurpose them. Perez can be a right winger. Oliveira has already become a midfielder and apparently is the second best striker at the club if you look at the coach reports. Todd Thomas is having a poor game and is on a yellow card. So Rogers can come on for him and play left back. Um, and then we're going to just look at fitness levels for everybody else. So Park is the one who was tired going into the game. So Wally can come on for him and play on that right-hand side. And that will do for now. And we'll just hopefully comfortably see out the game without accumulating any more injuries because like I say they've been a little bit of a a little bit of a theme and a little bit of a problem for this run in which is why our form has been a little bit up and down Wally's in here another one of our attacking midfielders who if we're not going to use attacking midfielders is going to have to force himself into the team in a different position and for him he's got Park ahead of him so he probably needs to reinvent himself as a central midfielder uh, Francisco in fact Wally is probably looking at Gregoire thinking, yeah, go on, you can leave this summer. I'll take your role as the deep line playmaker. Villa Lobos is in again, and that's 13 for the season for him now. Two for today, and it's 5-0 to home. This Chelsea side are an embarrassment. At this home side are really very, very good. Look at this beautiful football, lovely pass from Richards. Villa Lobos doesn't miss anymore, apparently. He's turned in the, into the striker we all thought he could be. It just took him two years to get there. hope that doesn't mean he's going to leave this summer. We just finally get him scoring. And all of a sudden, he decides to up sticks and go and play somewhere with a better nightlife than Peterborough. Because that's the other thing. Anyone who's ever been to Peterborough, what nightclubs is he being caught, uh, caught leaving in the early hours of the morning? Goodness me. The man needs to get some standards. You don't go out in Peterborough unless he's, get, unless he's getting the train down to London and then getting the, missing the last train home. That would explain why he's not turning up for matches. He's missing the last train out of London. It catches everybody out. Um, it's 5-1 now. Alex Williams not getting his clean sheet bonus for today. Um, we're going to make our final substitution. I think I might actually bring the man himself, Sir Harrison Davies, on uh, to play at centre-back alongside Anderson just to, just to steady the ship for the final few minutes. Um, we probably... That was a weird head of clearance from Fazikas. We're probably not going to concede four goals, even with him there, 
lowering the quality of the defence, but his his leadership should just calm everybody down. And Wally charging forward gives it to Francisco. Francisco shoots, but it's straight at the Chelsea goalkeeper. It remains five one. Ten minutes to go, and Anderson is still on. No, in fact, it's not Anderson who's going off, is it? But Anderson's still on the left, so Davies not on yet. Francisco with the cross. Villa Lobos looking for his hat trick, and I think that's just touched the top of the crossbar. Um, couldn't keep his header down. He is only five foot nine. You don't expect him to score a lot of headed goals, um, but that one he did manage to uh, just just hit it onto the bar. Anderson now with the clearance. Couple of minutes left in this game. Davies is now on at the back, so if we could get a corner and have a Harrison Davies goal, that would be lovely. Williams has spilled one a little bit there um, and given away a corner. Like I say, it shouldn't be too much of an issue for us. The rain is now throwing down and Chelsea get a free header inside the six-yard box, but luckily they've not got their accuracy ability levelled up today. I think that's, that's proper football talk there. They need to level up their accuracy ability. Um, but we won the match, which means we go into that final day putting a little bit of pressure on Bournemouth. They've got to go to Villa to win, and Villa also need to win. So there's uh, there's a lot of pressure on both teams. It's going to be a going to be a barnstormer at Villa Birmingham. Meanwhile, we need to do our side of the bargain and just make sure we beat West Ham because obviously, if we beat if we don't beat West Ham, it doesn't matter what goes on in the other one. We have to beat them. Um, young home shine. I like it. We're actually turning into a decent side. Who'd have thought? Right, just the one change for the West Ham game. Then Richardson is fit enough to come back in. So that's exactly what he does. Some might doubt why. 7.96 in his last five games. That's why Richardson comes straight back in. No matter how well Ola Richards has been playing, uh, Richardson comes straight back in. Other than that, it is the same team that has just destroyed Chelsea. Hopefully we can destroy West Ham as well and get ourselves into the Europa League. We obviously need to be keeping a very close eye on what goes on in the Aston Villa-Bournemouth game as well. Um, what's happened? Fazikas is injured immediately. Well, that's a long, long way from ideal. Um, it's a proper red injury as well. Lower leg injury in the first couple of minutes of the game. Not a good sign. And um, we'll bring Rogers on to play alongside Anderson for the rest of the game. Well, not ideal. There was an argument there for bringing on Harrison Davies because of the importance of the game, but Rogers is the future. So Rogers is the one who comes on. Park is in here. Park across to... Oh, it's Richardson who's cutting. I thought it was going to be Villa Lobos on the end of it. Richardson couldn't apply the finish. So there's Francisco and he's got almost an open goal ahead of him and it kind of just bubbles and scuffles into the hands of the West Ham goalkeeper. Um, not the ideal finish that you would look for him to apply in that situation. And West Ham now coming at us and we need to defend this properly here and we haven't because Gillespie's given away a penalty. The commentary at the bottom of the screen says it's a tight call. The ref's going over to his little telly. To me, it looked like a knee-high slide tackle. I don't think there's anything tight about this. West Ham have got a penalty and we need Alex Williams to step up and make himself a hero once again with a penalty save. Um, referee's just going to confirm that for us now, I'm sure. There you go. Your confirmation that the penalty has been awarded. We're just hitting the 10th minute of this game and Alex Williams needs to needs to be a hero. And he's not, but the post was. Make that post a club icon. The dream is still alive. Park runs up the other end of the pitch, but the highlight just disappears out from under us. So I suspect... It didn't really go anywhere. What I want to do is have a look at what's going on in the uh, in the Bournemouth game. But it's uh, so much action going on here. We're not getting long enough to check the latest scores. Francisco into the penalty area. Goes past two defenders. And once again, their goalkeeper doesn't properly deal with it. But none of our strikers are there to apply a finish to it. We've had opportunities to be ahead in this game. And I hope we don't end up ruining them. Um, Gregoire with the cross. Francisco hits the crossbar now. Oh, my goodness. What have we got to do to get a goal in this game? What, right. Why are the latest scores not in alphabetical order? That makes things that bit much more difficult to, to track and find out what's going on. Uh, West Ham with an open goal. I mean, that's really poor defending. It's I don't want to blame Rodgers, but that's the area of the, the pitch that Rodgers should have been covering there. And it was suspiciously vacant 
of anybody in a home shirt. That's Gregoire. So where on earth is Rogers? That's Rogers. So Rogers, I mean, he's out of position, I think. I th I think he's out of position there. It's their attacking midfielder. It's not a guy coming in off the right wing who's done that. That's the attacking midfielder that neither of our centre-backs are tracking. Anderson had the striker. So Rogers should have had him covered and he didn't. He's had a he's had an open goal shot. It's still nil nil in Villa Bournemouth. So if we can somehow turn this around, a win here would be enough to put us above Bournemouth. It won't now. Bournemouth have just gone ahead against Villa, and it looks like final day. We're uh, we're not quite gonna achieve what we hoped we'd achieve, but we're still gonna get into Europe. First ever time in Europe. First ever time in the Conference League for me across any save. And we did qualify for the Conference League in non-league to legend. I think. Last year, I want to say, I don't think it was this year's non to Legend. I think last year's non to Legend with Barnsley, we qualified for it. But before we played in it, I moved clubs. So I'm pretty sure in the couple of years that the Europa League, the Europa Conference League has been in the game, I've not ever played in it. So I assume it just works the same way as the Europa League. I'm thinking now we must have played in the Conference League when we were at Apollon. I think I'm talking absolute bobbins. I think we played in it multiple times at Apollon. Didn't we reach the final of the Conference League with Apollon? Or is that the Europa League all along? You'll all let me know down in the comments, I'm sure. In my head, we've never played in it, but I'm now thinking we probably have. Park plays it out to Gillespie. Gillespie across to Oliveira. And Oliveira grabs an equaliser. And maybe there's a little bit of hope for us here. We still need Aston Villa to do us a big, big favour. Um, which, I mean, to be honest, they need to be doing themselves a favour as well because they need, I'm pretty sure they need a win to stay in the Premier League, depending on what goes on in other results. But we're giving ourselves a route back into this game. So at the moment, Villa are drawing against Bournemouth, which is enough. I mean, goal difference-wise, even if they lose, unless Newcastle win. But Villa are going to want to win. If we go ahead, we're in the Europa League based on scores as they are. We're going to bring Bayer on to play up front. And um, we're also going to bring Wally on because Wally was very good in that last game. And we're just going to shuffle up that front four. We're going to demand more again. And we're going to hope, right, Bournemouth have gone ahead again in that game by the looks of it. They've just come back up to 69 points. So maybe, maybe we're not quite going to do what we hoped we were going to do. But Europe's Europe. Uh, you know, Thursday night's Thursday night. Europe's Europe doesn't matter which flavour we're playing in. We've got more chance of winning the Conference League. Francisco's in here and he has turned it in. An 11th goal of the season for him. We're now doing our bit. It's 2-1 to us in this game against West Ham. If Bournemouth draw level... In fact, if Villa draw level against Bournemouth, Bournemouth have just gone ahead again. 2-1 to their neck man Santos again. The guy who's got close to 40 goals for them this season. Hideous. Uh, but if we can, uh, if Villa can grab an equaliser there, we will just, I think, sneak into the Europa League. It's not going to happen unless it happens in the final kick of the game. Kind of want Villa to be relegated for not doing their bit, but they haven't been. I think we've finished second. It's an all time high finish for us. Yeah, there's your confirmation. And there's your confirmation that we've qualified for the Europa League. Or it's not actually. It's confirmation that the league is getting Europa League spot. I'm just glazing over the fact Fazikas has broken his leg. That's a problem. Good job Elias is coming in this summer. We're going to be, I guess, Anderson and Elias next year. Unless we get Abigail back. That's a big blow because that's him out until Christmas. Not ideal at all. But that is your confirmation, I think. We still haven't got an email saying we've qualified for Europe. I'd like to see that email because I've been done dirty by this game before. We still don't have it. So we've been given money. At one stage, we look like qualifying for the Champions League. I don't know that we did. <laughs> I don't know that we ever looked. We were all right at the start of the season. We never looked like we were going to sustain it, though. Um, right. I mean, bringing Abagai back seems all the more important now we've lost Azikas until Christmas that might be number one target for the summer bringing Enoch Abagai back to the new home of football 
Can we have confirmation that we're in Europe, please? It might have to wait for the transfer special tomorrow. I think the, the initials next to our name in the league table should probably be enough. But I would, uh, I would like to see... Yeah, we'd like to find out. Because we all know once we see this page, we have to wait. And you have to wait for the transfer special tomorrow. I'm like 90% sure we're in the Conference League next season. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.